my point is, it doesn't even matter that I know tip. It matters how I move. It matters. That doesn't get me from point A to point B. Right. You know what I mean? Who you know don't don't matter. What you have, that doesn't matter either. What matters is the action you take, how you bring together everything that you have, and how you execute it. You right. feel me? Okay. So that's what move was about. Okay, definitely. Now, uh, now, the is there a video out to it yet, or actually? We're shooting our video May the 21st, which is a Sunday in Atlanta. Are you, do y'all watch the rap game? Yeah. So we have Flage, right? Okay. From Savannah. Shout out Flage. And I, I'll tell you a quick little story about her right quick. Her father, Camouflage, who she talks about on the show all the time, her father is the one who put me in, who got me rapping. So he was mm. like a big artist on Universal back at that time. And I was like 14. I was a poet. You remember Flage? And um, I was a poet. And he was like, nah, you a rapper. And I'm like, I'm a poet. He's like, trust me, you a rapper. <laughs> and I started rapping, right? Fast forward, Flash get killed in Savannah. Her mom is pregnant with her. She never met her dad, right? Mm. Then she blows up on the rap game. So for me, watching it is like a full circle moment. So she's going to be in the video. Okay. And then also King Roscoe, who's also from Atlanta. Okay. And kid. From um, the rap game, they're going to be in the video, and they're gearing up to go on tour with Jermaine Dupree. So yeah, yeah. Right, I know. I, you um, I did I, check that out. I actually, um, we had. Well, she wasn't here, but uh, what was that girl's name? Young Lyric. Um, we got an interview with her. Um, she was. I think she was on the second or the. I think she was on the first season. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we actually got to talk to Young Lyric when I was in Houston and stuff like that. So. Oh, that's awesome. So that's pretty dope. Um, you gotta let me come to Houston. I need a reason to go to Texas. Well, I'm going there. Okay. Cool. So I'm that, coming. I'm coming for another interview. Okay. Oh, come holler at me, man. We're gonna be. We're gonna be at the. Richie, you coming? Yeah. And you and your brother? No, definitely. You gonna be there? I'm gonna try to make it. I enjoyed Houston, so I'm gonna have to come back. You gonna, you gonna come every day? I'm probably gonna try to make. I it. can't wait to go to Houston and, and then right around and be like I was in Beyonce hood. Like that's how <laughs> that's, that's how the I first felt. Bar. That's how I felt. I'm in Beyonce hood. Yeah, <laughs> but you, but you know what though? I would come on June 27th. The reason why I say that is because that's DJ Screw's birthday. Okay. And they shut the whole city down for really? DJ Screw. Um, you know all the you know you know what screw music is right the slow down and the chopped and screw That's stuff true, yeah. they all the radio stations they shut it down and you know Paul Wall everybody comes out everybody comes out the the what you call them cars and swingers or them uh slingers slingshots no 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 they got the rims on there I know they, they. I know they. No, it's swingers. That's, I think they is called swingers, but they got like candy paint cars and stuff like that. So they shut it down, and it's a good. It's it's a party everywhere you go because it's that's just how it is. I guess. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I'm a, June twenty seventh. I can move my schedule around. So yeah, if I'll, I'll already be down there, I'm I'm gonna be down there for the summertime. So. I missed one point. Can I make one point? I miss. Go ahead. So this summer we're having our first literacy summer camp, July okay. 10th through the 14th um, in Atlanta. But this is our first year, um, and so I have to shout out our sponsor Sprout, who's going to sponsor the, the food for the kids. But this is our first year having a literacy summer camp. Okay. And so and I wrote the curriculum, so it's like school, but it's doper, and it's like focused on the literary art. <laughs> Yo, Shot Town Number Radio, the best place to be at on any day really. It's the one and only DJ Malone. Hey, girl, Ebony Kiera. Man, it's how you move. That's what they say. It's about how you move. It's how move, 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 move. <laughs> Hey, I like that, man. You need to do a techno remix. I, I think if you did like a techno and like a uh, reggae remix of that, that could that could, that could go. Yeah, that could go. Okay, I, I I'll, I'll, I'll take that into consideration. I don't think I ever did techno music before, but it's it's, it's real dope, though, man. So, everything, so. Yeah. yeah, it 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 really is. Well, if, well, let me ask you this then: a real question. If it wasn't for hip hop, where would you be? In a mental asylum. Hmm. Because this is the thing, right? Everybody um, give hip hop such a bad rap, right? But the thing is, it's our language, and it's just that if you don't understand it, 
then you just don't speak the language. It's like if two Chinese people came in here speaking Chinese, you don't be like, oh, y'all bad people. It's just like, it's yeah. not for you to understand what they're talking about. So that's what hip hop is as, uh, as black people in America. We don't have our own language. Real, real. But, you know, in the recent years with hip hop emerging, we created our own language. And so it scares other industries because they don't know what we're talking about. But for me, I use that to, um, you know, like anybody else, to vent. I come from abject poverty, a real. single parent household. You know what I mean? You were destined, like, you know, like I've, I always say you. I always tell people sometimes I feel like I wasn't destined to make it out. I had to make a hole and get out my own way. You know what I'm saying? So applause to you, man. Applause to anybody who in, who's in that situation and who is dedicated to that craft and say, you know what? I'm not going to accept no for an answer. I'm not going to do that. So Definitely. Definitely. So, yes. It's, you know what, though? Once you're born black in America, you have to make it out. It doesn't even matter. You can be born blue ivy. It's just certain connotations that come with being black in America. Real. You got to have a, a different mindset anyway. Okay. Anyway. Well, let, let me ask you this. Now, you're, you're, the, the child, touch for books. Mm-hmm. And, and I know we kind of touched on how, you know, you became to that situation. But where was that moment you said, you know what? I want to go into a different route, and I want to go in this route with the Toots for Books. How did that mind process even just come about? Like I said, I, I come from uh, abject poverty, so by the time I was 21, I mean, all of my friends were dead. Mm. Even, like, girls, you know what I mean? And it's, these are violent crimes. It's not, like, just cancer, you know what I mean? And what I realized is that the only difference between me and them is that I just I had you know uh, creative talent I could write and while they're out in the streets doing whatever I'm writing poetry I'm reading you know what I mean and I'm and I chose I chose education I went to college mm. so so what I realized is that I was no different than them I'm no better than them I just had a different avenue you really? know okay. when my best friend Eric got killed I was like moving in my dorm the mm. day he was on the block I was moving in my dorm. You see what I'm saying? Real, real. And he was killed at the same playground we would play basketball at all the time. Real. So it, it helped me to say, okay, well, I started doing a whole bunch of research and realizing that crime and poverty are um, directly correlated to illiteracy. Mm. So the more a person isn't literate, like the more you can't read, you can't count. Real. You know what I mean? Really. And then the more you can't read or count, you can't communicate well. Real. And it makes you... It makes you upset. It makes you frustrated. And then we end up, you know, being criminals, not because you're a bad person, but because you're um, incompetent Real. in society. So That's it made real. me say, I need to do something. Let me encourage literacy and let me not only encourage it. Let me put my money where my mouth is. Let me go find real. these kids and build up a nation of literate kids. Real, real. Yeah. Ebony, anything you want to ask us? Ebony, you haven't talked to me. What's wrong? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting back. Listen, I haven't been back. I haven't been here in a while. I've been sick, so I can't have been. I'm just. Well, I'm glad you kinda, better. Thank you. Thank you. She very came much. back so, just for you. <laughs> right. So I'm actually just sitting back, and listening, and observing what you're saying because it honestly is real, and and it's you know making me think like violence here in Chicago. I know you probably heard what's going on. And oh yeah. Everything that's happening in the media, and it's just more so like I do feel like poverty and probably illiteracy go hand in hand of whatever the hell yeah. is going on here yeah. because you got everybody that's getting killed is young you got our kids you got our children you got our teenagers it seems like everybody that is getting killed is from age like 11 to like 24 wow. well, well, so and, and we and have it, a big range and, and, the, and the crazy part about it is is that and a lot of people don't know until you live it. And like a lot of people, they come to Chicago and oh well, it's not it's not really that bad, Malone. You haven't lived where I lived wow. enough time, <laughs> enough time for you to say that assessment. I mean, Rich, and I'm pretty sure you know you've seen it firsthand yourself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm and I'm pretty sure everybody in this room have seen you know how Chicago. And one thing I will say. Chicago conditions you. When I go to Houston, mm-hmm. I have that same mentality I have in Chicago. I bring it to Houston. Yeah. And, re- and, and you know, I don't mean to do it, but it's just like um, I remember walking down the street one time. Somebody say, how you doing? And it made me cautious because <laughs> what you want, <laughs> what you're trying to do. And that's just how Chicago conditions you. 
But the, 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 my bigger question is, where do we go from here as a community? We know our problem. So where do we go? It's a lot more people that, I mean, that need to step up as far as, I mean, we got our main man, Chance the Rapper, that is really, you know, trying to come through for the youth right now. Yes. Um, but we do need to build from the inside, I feel like. I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of black people, a lot of young people with the voting situation. You do, besides the president, we're going to X that out right quick. But you do have to start with your aldermen, your mayors, your, <clears throat> excuse me, your senates, anything like that. Like, it has to come from the inside because if you have no one kind of backing your community, it's kind of like you kind of shit out of luck anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, it's the truth. <laughs> um, I don't know how it is in Atlanta. But I, you know, I, you know, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. You know, poverty is always, um, it can consume you. But like, like you said, if you really want to get out, you're gonna make a way. Yeah, you- it, this is the thing. People that are in poverty, I swear to God, I didn't know that I grew up poor until I was grown and I look back. So people that's in poverty don't even know they're in poverty. And when you make those decisions, mm. you know what I mean? Those criminal decisions you don't even know that you're making them because you're in poverty until you have a time to reflect you feel real, me? Real. so anytime you know anybody ever stole it probably wasn't because they were greedy it's probably they was trying to pay the rent and and and, and that's the thing it's like it, there's a difference where i have to go out and make something happen for myself versus to i decide to do it and and, and it makes it's like a mindset yeah i call it the circle of a BS. So I'll put it like this. If I go out and try to find a job and the guy that the employer is not trying to hire me, he's not trying to hear what I got to say. I'm have a squeaky clean record at that time. Mm-hmm. Squeaky clean. Now, you can't if I can't tell a landlord or I just don't have it. I can't tell him that. Mm-hmm. Rent, rent has to be paid. So the first is coming. Bills are piling up. What, what am I supposed to do? So I have to go out. My survival instincts were kicked in. So I had to go out and make something happen for myself. Otherwise, I'm going to be put out. Yeah. So I go out and sell this whatever. I get caught up. I get into the system. Then after I do whatever I need to do with society in jail, I come back out. Now the employer has a real reason to say, no, I'm not going to hire you because of your background. But you could have hired me way back yeah. when, right. when I was coming to you. Versus to you want to hire this dude, this guy or whatever, because his mom and, and pops or and uh, his mom and, and the people pick him up every day from work, and he has no work there, and no drive. He's only going to be there for like three months at the yeah. most. Versus to me, just because or whatever you think of me, you don't want to hire me, and that's the circle of bulls. Yeah, that is. I, that's why I encourage and empower entrepreneurship, mm. right? Because Nobody is going to give us jobs. I had some Mexican friends back in Atlanta. They own a couple IHOP. They hire every Mexican. They don't even got to know them. You Mexican, you got a job. You know what I mean? Like, they look out for their own. So we have to create our mm. own stuff. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and we have to um, be able to empower others and, and you know, and look out for, other, for, for our own because nobody's going to come back for us. Real, real. Ain't nobody cracking the sky. Ain't nobody coming to get us to do nothing. We, we gotta, we gotta do it. Real, real. Yeah. Well, you know what we're gonna do, man. This is a lot of deep stuff, man. Yeah, it's, I ain't it, trying to get off. No, 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 no. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's cool. Just, it, if people need to hear this, yeah. people need to hear the real. But what we're gonna do is, man, we're gonna go to a music break real quick. Um, we still got torches in the building and Richie Rich, Richie. and oh, yeah, we're gonna talk to Rich. we're gonna talk to Richie when we come back, man, and what he got going on. And our guy, our viral star, is in the building, Harvey Westbrook. I ain't going to say why he got viral. We're, we're going to leave that alone. Yeah. <laughs> but we getting there. but uh, he got, he, we're going to play a joint called Problems. It's right here. DJ Malone. Happening, Kiara. Saitana Radio. We're going to come right back. You know, sometimes you just got to sit down and face your problems, man. It takes you a long way. 